Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to be making some 3D printed threads in plasticity. Now, this has been requested, and I've done another couple of videos on 3D printing and plasticity. This is going to use some very basic tools, so you shouldn't need to worry about Indie versus uh, the Studio license, and you shouldn't need to worry about which version you're on. I will say that the Indie version will have some restrictions on export, but as long as you can get a mesh file exported like an STL, then you should be fine. To get started, what we're going to do is first check our units. So in our preferences, we want to go to grid and units, and I'm going to be using millimeters for this example. If you want to use inches or something else, it's perfectly fine, but millimeters is just going to be a little bit easier. I don't really care about the grid size and accent lines. You can really make it whatever you want. It's not going to affect us whatsoever. We're going to take the cube and delete it. And we're going to hit seven on the keyboard, which is our top view. Now that's on the numpad. If you don't happen to have a, a numpad, if you're on a laptop that doesn't have it, you can always come over here and click the top of this cube in the upper right hand corner. That'll get you to the same place. We're going to use the center circle at the origin. We're going to hit tab and 50 millimeters and enter. Now, obviously that's tiny because the initial scale in plasticity is based on not millimeters so it's going to be quite a bit smaller so all we have to do is hit the forward slash and that's going to allow us to zoom into whatever we have selected now there's a couple things that we need to consider when we start to talk about 3d printed threads this is there's not a thread tool in plasticity so we have to manually do this and there are a lot of different threads what we're going to be doing in this video is traditionally considered a bottle thread now these can come in a round profile or a square profile Square profiles aren't really great for 3D printing, so we're gonna be using the round version. You can, of course, do the same process with a triangular thread, but I would just sort of caution you on that. If you are trying to match a pre-existing thread size, let's say that you're using metric values of 50 by two, that means two millimeters between each thread, or if it's going to be something like two inches by 13, that's 13 threads per inch. You have to play around with the numbers and make sure that you know exactly what you're doing with those. For our purposes, we're going to be 3D printing both sides, the bolt and the nut. So it doesn't really matter as long as they match. So now that I have a 50 millimeter diameter circle, I'm going to add a second circle here. So we're going to go to the origin once again, hit tab and do 52 millimeters. I'm going to explain why in just a minute, but let's just go ahead and start with the inside one. We're gonna pull this up a distance of 20 millimeters. Hit enter. We're gonna delete that first inside circle and we're gonna hide the second one. Now, the reason that we have this 20 millimeter high cylinder here is because that's gonna be the basis for the height of our threads. So I'm gonna start with this spiral tool. We're gonna to select the bottom center face and the top center face. And then we're gonna find a snap point. I like to use either the X or Y axes, left click, and notice that by default, we're on four turns. For whatever sort of size you're working with, you may have to play around with this. We're gonna use four turns. It's gonna be perfectly fine for this 20 millimeter height. If you happen to make it smaller like 10, you would wanna reduce this to something like two. But keep in mind that that's the number of threads that we're gonna have for this, this distance of 20 millimeters. So we're gonna right click. With it selected, we're gonna use the pipe tool. By default, the pipe tool will be set at one millimeter. And we actually wanna make this quite a bit bigger. So if we go to four, obviously that's way too big. If we go down to two, this is looking a little bit better. We maybe wanna go down to say one and a half. We'll have to play around with these numbers. I think that I'm gonna use two millimeters for this example. It looks fairly large, but I've got sort of a trick up my sleeve here in just a minute. So I think that's gonna be okay. We'll right click and everything looks okay. So what I wanna do now is I wanna hide the pipe. Now the reason that I wanna hide the pipe is when we're dealing with threads, we wanna taper them into the diameter. So the way that we're gonna do that, because we've got this spiral, this curve that ends at this point, we're simply gonna take this top face, hit space bar to create a temporary construction plane. And then we wanna terminate that somewhere inside. Now, if you wanna do this precisely, my suggestion is to take a center circle figure out what diameter you want it to terminate at. Now, remember if we're using two millimeter diameter pipe, we would wanna bring it in at least that radius value, which would be one. I would err on the side of caution and make it go in a bit further. 
So instead of sort of using uh, 49, we'll maybe use 48 millimeters. And that's gonna be just enough to get it to come in. If you wanna make it smaller, then you can certainly do that. We'll hit tab and use 46. And that'll give us a little bit of a margin of error. Either is fine, again, as long as the end of this terminates inside. Then I'm gonna take a line tool, go from the origin, snap to that. We'll right click. While it's still selected, we wanna rotate it, which is R on the keyboard or selecting rotate down here. We wanna use the pivot point option, which you can see is V and set that at the origin and then rotate this line. I'm gonna use 15 degrees for my example. This is basically the termination point. So the next thing that we wanna do, I'm gonna rotate this a little bit. When we're on a temporary construction plane like this, it's not going to go away when we rotate like it does with a standard front, right, or top view. And then in the circle section, we're gonna hold down the left mouse button, go all the way to the bottom to tangent arc. And we wanna go from this edge here to this point here, right click, and then we'll get off the temporary construction plane. So I don't need the line, we can select and delete it, don't need the circle. But now if we bring the pipe back, what we can do is we can take the end face of the pipe, we can use the sweep tool, and we can sweep it along this here. Right click, then I can get rid of that arc. I don't need it at all. Now, to just join them together to make it a bit easier, we're gonna select it, hit Q, select that, hit Q again, and then right click. So we're gonna repeat that process on the bottom, select the bottom face, space bar. This time I'm not gonna worry so much about precisely getting it to end somewhere. I'm just gonna drag it in. We'll get off the temporary construction plane. And then once again, we'll select our profile, which is gonna be this end face. We'll use sweep and go along this. Then we'll hit Q, Q. Now we've joined it together. Uh, so I still have the spiral. I'm gonna hide it. I don't really need it, but for right now, we're just gonna hide it. The next thing that I wanna do is make that center cylinder a bit bigger, but remember, I, I had that little extra circle that we created, that one that was at 52 millimeters. The reason for this is because when we're creating these threads, if we have the circle perfectly end in the, the diameter that we created, if it's exactly halfway where that spiral was, that works. We can 3D print that and we can make that thread work. But what I found to be a bit more consistent is to actually sync this in a bit. And the way that I'm going to sync it in a bit is by creating that larger diameter. So using this larger circle, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. And I want to pull it down as well. But let's go ahead and let's just make it 30 millimeters. We're going to hide that circle. Go to a front or a side view, which is 1 or 3 on the keyboard. We're going to use move, which is G on the keyboard. You're going to hit Z for moving in the Z axis and then just bring it down some amount. So now we've got our thread. You can see the bottom one tapers in a bit slower just because we didn't use a, a specific radius and a specific angle, 15 degrees. Either is perfectly fine, but this is going to give us a better 3D printed thread. It's going to be a bit smoother in terms of its operation than if we were to just use that 50 millimeter diameter. Now, before we combine these, we do want to make sure we take this spiral and duplicate it. And that's going to be shift and D. Now, do note that duplicate object is also one of the common standard tools down here. So you can just click on that, then right click to accept. And we're going to hide the duplicate for right now. So we're going to select one of these, Q, select the threads, hit Q again, and right click to accept. Now, what we can build is just some sort of simple object. So select the top, O to offset, and then we can take this and sort of pull it inward. We don't want to go all the way through. So I'm just going to look from the side and I'm just going to make it thin on the bottom. And now we've got just kind of like a little container. You can add any detail you want. For example, if we want to chamfer the top or fill it or whatever, and go ahead and do that. But this is the basis for creating our physical threads. Now, the other part of this is that we need to create a, a nut, a cap, a lid, or something that will screw onto this. So for the purposes of our video, I'm going to create um, just a nut that can sort of move up and down this entire thing. And the way that we're going to do that is to take our duplicate here, and we're going to offset it. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. 
Now, one thing that we need to understand when we're 3D printing is that there's tolerances involved. A 3D printer is not going to be precise. Your printer might print undersized or oversized, and it may be within a certain tolerance window. The general accepted tolerance is plus or minus 0.2 millimeters, which means that your parts can be 0.2 bigger or 0.2 smaller. And because of that, we need to make sure that we leave enough room or space between them, but not too much so that our threads don't work. So what I'm going to do is use a circle. And remember that we have 52 millimeters for the diameter of our part, not counting the threads. So I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to make this part 53 millimeters. Now that's a bit on the loose side, but if we're not making something that is really precise, we don't really need it to be such a tight thread. We're not machining threads here. So 52 to 53 millimeters, that one millimeter, it's going to be loose, but it'll be fine for what we're doing. And then we just need to make the outside shape as well. So I'm gonna hit tab and let's just go ahead and make that 60. So next we're gonna take that profile, we're gonna extrude it down. We can make it as big as we want. I'm gonna just say 10 millimeters Then I'm gonna hide these circles. I don't really need them, but we're gonna hide them for right now. Next, I'm gonna take this G and Z and move it down. I wanna make sure it's in the middle of my thread somewhere. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can use minus 10 millimeters if you want to. I just don't want it to start or end where we have these tapers. The next thing that I wanna do is hide that body and bring back our, our sort of duplicate spiral. Now, remember, if we just cut this away from this body, it's gonna be exactly the same size as the external threads. There's absolutely no chance of that working. So we need to have that a little bit of tolerance. So I'm gonna select the face here Hold down shift, select the outside face here, and then we're gonna offset it. Now you can use whatever value you want. Again, 0.2 millimeters is kind of the accepted tolerance range for most of these desktop 3D printers. Yours might be worse or better. Uh, so you will just need to find what numbers work for you in general. And doing a test like this is a pretty good way. We can find out whether or not we need to go bigger or smaller with that. Now, because the diameter here is a millimeter bigger than the part. I don't wanna to go too much bigger on these threads, otherwise it might just slide on and off. But what we're gonna do now is just hit Q and we'll remove this. And then we can bring our other piece back. Now this original piece we don't need anymore. So all we need to do is just select and delete it. But now we've got our threads. I do wanna add a couple of extra features here. So select that top face space bar uh, which is the temporary construction plane. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of a feature here. Rotate this around, grab that profile. And as we pull it down, hold down control on a Windows machine. With it selected, we'll do a radial array. All, all of them will be selected by default. So all we need to do is hit Q, hit Q again to join, but hold down shift and select this ring here. That'll make it real easy. And then we can delete all this extra geometry. These circles we don't need, spiral we don't need, and that original circle we don't need. Get off that construction plane. And now we've got our threads. We can print it and try it out. If you want to do a little bit of investigation, I would suggest going to a top view, which is seven on the keyboard. We'll go ahead and create a horizontal line and then use the shortcut C for cut. Then all we need to do is hide this, that's H on the keyboard, go to our front view, and then we can get a good look at our threads. So you can see we've got that 0.2 millimeter offset. So we've got a little bit of a gap here. We've got a millimeter difference between the diameter. So half a millimeter on one side and the other. And that should be plenty. This should be a good, uh, sort of a good thread. So we're gonna do Control Z to undo, put those back together, delete that line. And now we can export this. Now, just a quick reminder, if you are looking to purchase Plasticity, we are an affiliate. So you can use the code LEAD10 at checkout. That'll get you 10% off, and it'll also help out the channel. So now let's just select one of these bodies. I'm going to go to Export. I'm going to pick STL for this example. And I'm going to go ahead and do Threaded Bolt 2. I've obviously already printed something like this. They're a little bit different every time. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll export. Now I am using the STL. You can use OBJ if your slicer 
supports it. You can use a step file. It just kind of depends on what you're using. I'm using a Creality K1 Max and I'm using the Creality Print Slicer. One thing that I would sort of caution you on, when you're dealing with circular parts, especially ones where we've now got a circular profile thread, the density is going to be important. If this density is too low, then the threads on the inside are not going to have enough resolution. So I generally err on the cautious side and I increase the density on these parts when they're fairly small like this. Uh, so that way I don't have to worry about any problems. Now that we've got that, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, so the Creality Print. We can slice it and then we can send it to the 3D printer. So for me, we're just going to open the file. Of course, I got to go searching for it. And let's see, I think it's in here. All right. Just going to place it somewhere in my build area. And we'll put the nut in here as well. Now, I am using a PLA material. It's a hyper PLA, so I can run it fairly fast. I'm using a, sort of a, a medium speed here, which is 400 millimeters a second. Uh, so this thing generally will print pretty fast. The bolt portion's pretty tall, so I, I would guess it's going to take about an hour. Looks like 50 minutes, so that's not too bad. One word of caution for you with this, the Z seam could potentially cause a problem. Depending on how well your printer does, you may find that you want to randomize the Z seam so that way it doesn't leave a step or a, a sort of a bump on your threads. Because we've got enough of a gap in tolerance between these parts, I don't think it's really going to be a problem for me. So I'm going to go ahead and just run it with that standard Z, uh, that Z seam. And let's go ahead and let's just do, um, we'll call this something new. And let's go ahead and slap it on the 3D printer and then we'll take a look when it's done. So this is the design that we made in Plasticity. Uh, so it works pretty well. It could be a little bit better, and you can see again that Z seam alignment as a potential problem. But the threads worked out pretty well on both pieces, and it really works again the best, at least in my experience, if you sink the threads into the diameter a bit and don't make them a full uh, half circle or semicircle. The other ones I printed here, very similar. I use sort of the same structure. However, I made the tolerance or the gap between the two pieces bigger. This one is the smoothest out of all of them. Uh, however, again, it does have a little bit of slack. A third design I made was a bit tighter. So what I mean by that is the threads are actually full profile. So I, I use from the center point of the pipe all the way out. And I use, again, a gap between these. It works okay. Um, it's a bit tighter. And a third version I did, I stacked the threads really close together. And this version works as well, but again, it's just a bit tighter. So uh, just from my initial test and playing around, it definitely seems like using the, uh, the semicircle, but then sinking it into the diameter of your part a bit, planning for that one to two millimeters of overlap, certainly makes a better thread engagement between the parts. So that's going to be all. Again, remember that we are an affiliate, so you can use the code LEAD10 at checkout, and that will get you 10% off of your purchase of either the Indie or the Studio license. If you have any questions on what you saw here, or if you want to see more content with plasticity, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.